So that's all the announcements I have. Um, so tonight our demonstrator is Adam Luna. He is originally from Peru, yes? And he's, I have not memorized your bio that you gave, up, gave to us, but there's a great bio on the website right now. And he's going to be doing threaded boxes tonight. And it's going to be excellent, I am sure. Hopefully people have taken the opportunity before the um, meeting and during the, the break to ch check out his boxes. They are all quite nice. And I'm looking forward to seeing the demo. Uh, I don't know about excellent, but uh, we'll make something for sure. <laughs> so, I brought two, two blanks already for this demo, because I know I'm going to mess up one. So, uh, I'll just jump to the second one. Uh, thread, hand, hand chasing threads. It's, it's been a, an, an old and traditional way for hundreds of years. This is not, nothing new. I'm not bringing anything new. Uh, you probably have heard about it. Uh, there's people doing it with jigs. And there's people doing it by hand. Uh, this, this was a trade for the metal workers to repass the threads on metal, metal uh, legs. And uh, one of the big influences of thread chasing uh, for me has been uh, the, the old Bill Jones. Uh, he, he, he was called the ivory turner. Uh, he used to thread on ivory and hardwoods, but mainly, mainly in ivory. And the threads on ivory are just, uh, just beautiful. Threading on, on, on the hardest materials you could, you could possibly find, it's the best. Uh, nowadays, it's a little harder to find ivory, as you know. You know? And uh, we now do it on the hardest woods we can find, we can possibly find. One of the things, or one of the main things about uh, threading is that one of the main frustrations for people starting to thread is the not having the right material. It has happened to me, and I bet it has happened to a lot of people that have hang, uh, have hold a, a, thread, a chaser to their hands and started trading. Uh, having the right the right wood is the main the main thing. Uh, for this, you not only find the, the the most dense wood, but you gotta find the most dense with less grain with most tightest grain you can find. One of those, uh, one of those woods is called the boxwood, English boxwood. Uh, English boxwood, it's almost non-existent here. Have you seen those? Uh, those are pretty much uh, bushes here in the US. Well, it's a bush in, 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 in UK too. So it takes about Two to three hundred years to get a diameter, of, a decent diameter of uh, you know five five inches, uh, you know, to, to five inches, about. And uh, everywhere everywhere I, I go, you know, I try to I try to ask for for that wood, but in here in the U.S. it's super hard to find it. Uh, a year ago, I was at my dad's house. He had a cow, he had three or four bushes of. Uh, English boxwood, and I said, Dad, those bushes need to go. We gotta finish this. Uh, we gotta open up this space. And the, the bushes were not that old; they were probably 15 years old. But I could get, uh, I could get a, a decent, uh, an inch diameter bush. And I've been playing with that, and it's been nice. It's just beautiful to thread with boxwood. It, it's just, uh, it's just amazing. It's the best one to thread with. And then, then there's other woods. For example, there's the lignum vitae. You know, we, we have, we have here what we have here in woodcrafts. I've seen is the the greener one uh, that comes from Argentina. It's, it's their actual name. That's that's actually not lignum vitae, the real one. 
It's actually a fake lignum vitae. Uh, the real one, it's more brown. The, the real lignum vitae is more brown. It actually grows in, in Florida. Not many people know about the, that in uh, Central America. And it's a little different. It's good for threading. It's not the best, but it's good. The only problem is that if you get it from Woodcraft or uh, providers here, it's super wet. Even though you had it sitting for, there for, for 20 years on your bench, it's still wet because it still has all the, all the, 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 the what is it called? The paraffin or the, yeah, the, the sealer on it. So, you buy one of those pieces and want to trade on those, it's going to be tough because it will, it will be super wet. Now, other woods that we can find around here to thread is uh, ironwood. Ironwood is perfect for threading. And most ironwood it should, it just comes because it's been sitting on the sitting dead for years and years. Actually, this uh, the lid in here, it's made out of uh, ironwood. And it threads nicely. If uh, and the threads barely any crumble on it, and uh, that's the beauty of having super dense and very tight grain woods. Other local woods in here. Um, the other one I found that threads well is olive wood. Doesn't thread super well, but it, it, you can get a decent thread on it. Again, uh, the wood is to be completely bone dry. Just with the uh, friction lid boxes, the wood, the wood will move, and, uh, and when it moves on threads, it might not open again. Other alternative we have stabilized wood. This this one is made out of a uh, buckeye pearl. It's fully stabilized, and I was able to get a decent trade on this. And as you can see, you know, the back eye is super light, very funky. But thanks to the stabilizing process, you can get a decent thread on these boxes. And then we have the acrylics, right? We have the alumalite that we nowadays we're using and the hybrid combining uh, wood and acrylic. And this, this is how it started, how this box started, as a blend like this. It's a uh, lumalite and half of it, it's a uh, petrified uh, araucaria from Chile. I brought this piece from Chile, and this wood, uh, it's a, again, it's a conifer that was uh, petrified for thousands of years. And a friend of mine happened to go to one of those parks, the volcanic parks, and brought some pieces just because he said, look at this wood, it's so amazing. You know? I only just rub it with, uh, with 600 and it gets a shine. And I said, well, that's awesome. I might, might be able to thread on that. So, so I only have a few pieces, so I have to do something with it. So I uh, cast it and I was able to get a nice box. And actually the threads are very nice, it threads very nicely. So there's alternatives for, for wood if you cannot find uh, the right wood for doing this. Uh, another local wood that I found that it's really good for it, not really good, but it's good, it, it won't give you much headache, it's Hawthorne. Hawthorne? Hawthorne. It gives you a, a decent thread, not the most perfect one, but it's decent enough for you not to have to be, 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 be feeling bad about hand threading. What would you say again? Hawthorne. Mm -hmm. 
And then of course, boxwood. And you can always, uh, this is what I did with this one. I had a, a boxwood, some boxwood. And I, all I did was just setting an insert on it. I tried to stabilize this uh, Amboina pearl. It, for some reason it has too, ma too much oil on it. And it, it didn't quite stabilize right. And so I couldn't get a thread on the wood itself. So I said, oh, well, I, I'll put an insert. I did that, and, it, and I have a box now. Now, uh, the wood I'm going to demonstrate tonight is with uh, this wood. It's Quebracho from Argentina. It's one of the most dense wood, it's the most dense wood in the world. It is. It's most more denser than uh, ironwood, and uh, and I've been turning with this, and it's just beautiful. I, I love how it, how it turns. What's it called? Quebracho. <laughs> Quebracho. You, you gotta roll your R's. <laughs> Quebracho. Yeah. And uh, and it's just it's just one of the most beautiful woods I've I've turned with, and I mean just because. I use a lot of scrapers, and as you know, scrapers do well. Like scrapers like hardwoods, so uh, this will be this will be the one we'll, we'll be using for. If uh, if you want to start threading, I definitely recommend this wood from Bill Jones. Uh, there's a lot of stuff on YouTube. There's a lot of stuff online. There's a lot of stuff people that talk about other other people. But this is the guy you want to know. This is the guy you want to start learning. The way he redacts this book, the way he talks in the book, makes you feel good. It's just, it doesn't make you feel like a loser, you know? <laughs> because he, he had the same experience, he went through the same experiences that you will go through. And you will feel it, identify, and you will say, oh yes, I was doing that because because of that, and, and all of a sudden you will feel good. You will feel, oh, he did it, uh, so I'm not that bad. <laughs> but, uh, but he has done it thousands of times, thousands of times, and, they, and he says, the only way you will get thread chasing is by practicing every day, every day. Even if you do a couple of passes every day, you will get it. It will come. It will come in naturally. Okay? It's just a natural mo motion, like everything else. And you'll get hooked. That's for sure. You will get hooked. It happened to me. I testify of that. <laughs> and uh, and there's other books. There's a second book that he came out with, uh, turning uh, further notes for it. It's another great book. You you probably find it on Amazon uh, used. It's a great read. Great if you guys like to read. This these are the books that you want to get. He's funny. It'll make you laugh. It, it's 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 a great read. Um, Alan Batty also has when you buy the chasers from uh, Wood Turner's catalog, the premium chasers. He will it will also come with this book. Uh, notes of uh, Alan Batty. It's also a great book for thread chasing. It's got a couple of pages of thread chasing, not too many, but it, it will help you out a lot too. And there's another good, there's not that many good books about uh, thread chasing, but there's another one, uh, John Berkeley. He's also a UK guy. He, he was an apprentice of uh, Bill Jones. Um, and, and his book is more didactical, you know, it goes through step by step on, on the process of thread chasing and how you need to hold the tools and everything. Uh, it, so it's a really good book. Then the rest, I've seen the rest, I bought the rest, uh, they are not that good. So if you want to get into thread chasing, those, those three books are, are the ones that you want to get. Um, On the sign, I'm a big fan of Raffan. Raffan, you will have him. 
pretty soon, next month. Uh, there's not, nothing better than Raffan on the side. Uh, most of, uh, you will see a lot of my boxes, they, they follow the same design line. It's because I like him. I like, I like seeing his designs. I like reading his books. Uh, he's a great, great author. Um, uh, he will make you laugh too on things he, ta he talks about. Very traditional. Uh, one thing I like, traditional, traditional turning. You will see some of my tools are very traditional. And it's because I enjoy doing traditional turning. And of course, you know, for, for designing uh, this book from Chris Todd, it's really good. It's really good. Now, so this is the time where I make something happen, huh? Let's see. Can you talk about your chasers a little bit? Oh, yes, 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 you're right, chasers. The tools, I'll talk about the tools. So these are the main tools, the thread chasers. This is the female and the male chaser, and you will see them in action. Uh, these are the premium ones. You see the short handles? That's the size of the handle you want. The handles, you don't want the big handles. The problem with the Sorby ones, these handles are too long. You, they, they are hard to, hard to, hard to manipulate. You, 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 want, you want this tool to be one in your hand. You, you, don't, want it, you don't want a huge handle. So you want to you wanna wrap around your hand on it and hold it because it will follow the motion of your wrist and you will see it in action. Um, what number are those? I'm going to demonstrate with number 16. 16. I know that the Woodturners catalog sells the 16 and the 20 TPI. Uh, I wish they sell more, uh, more numbers because uh, I love threading on, on different sizes. But if you, there's, another, there's another place that you can find thread chase thread chasers. Uh, you can go to eBay and most most of the guys in the uh, UK, there's a lot of guys in the UK that sell chasers uh, and handle chasers. But uh, sometimes you will find it in lots, like lots of 60 chasers, but it will be like a mix and match. But it's okay because if you buy it a lot, it, it's like a seventy dollars lot of sixty chasers, and then you can mix and match, and then uh, you know get rid of the rest or whatever. Uh, it's a good deal. But what I found is that only in UK. I don't know if you guys know. Uh, was this thread chasing done only in UK? I mean, uh, historically, because I, I, I mean, when you go, you barely find any. I think there's a couple of manufacturers, I think it's in, one in Chicago and, or at Atlanta, I don't remember, that I, that I find, uh, I, I have found chasers and handled chasers. But most of the chasers you find uh, on England. Do you guys know if this, uh, why only in England and wasn't this a practice? Actually, most wood turning tools in general have been manufactured in England, at least the start. Mm -hmm. All of our, all of our structures, all of our gouges, all of the spindle gouges and pole gouges, they were all English originally. Now you're seeing them come out of a, a number of different countries, but uh, the English definitely owned the business for a long time. Right, and then, and like I said, this was this was a practice done in metalworking, so it must have been done. I mean, metalworking in in England, a lot of a lot of those done in England. Because uh, I see the brand, there's a brand that's called Presto, and they're high speed, and then there's other brands that are uh, just carbon, carbon metal. Uh, but yes, I mean, if you, can, if, if you wanna find a chaser for cheap, you can go on eBay and uh, buy them off the guys in England. We have to, is there any sharpening involved with those chasers? Yeah, sharpening? Yes. Sharpen or how do you do that? Yes, they're sharpening. You gotta make sure your chasers are sharpened, first of all. Uh, and what I use to sharpen, it's one, once in a while I will touch them up on the wheel, just hold them and touch them up, just like that. I, I, don't, I don't put much pressure, just hold them, because all you need is this tip 
to this uh, the, the top of the chaser hot sharpen it. So this little tip. You don't need anything else. Not much pressure. Just the top flat edge. Right? Yes, uh -huh, the top flat edge. Uh, not much pressure, just to barely touch it. And then you want to remove the burr because you are, after all, chasing or working with hardwoods. So you, and you don't want the burr. So you remove the burr. I get uh, my diamond honey uh, credit card and you just do a couple of passes and the burr is gone. And st I can start chasing now. The same with the female. I just hold it to the wheel, uh, a light pass and remove the burr, the burr and keep going. Not much other. If, if you try to to, to, to to sharpen this like this, you will mess up your chaser. Never like this. Never, never touch this part. Never touch this part. Never touch this part or this part. Now, once the chasers come in to you, what you need to do is round them. What I do is round the corners because they are too sharp. And you will see the, the motion that I will do on the on top of the tool rest. It has to be, it has to go freely with no stops, even on your, on your tool rest. It has to be super clean, has to be, you can lubricate it, you can put some paraffin on it, but it has to flow freely. Otherwise, what's gonna happen if I have a bump or something? It will catch up and it will mess up my tread. So this is super important. Your tool has to has to go around freely on the tool rest. Uh, on this one, I don't do much because all the movement will be on my arm with the armrest. I'll have the armrest, and it will go through with the armrest, and you will see that movement. Uh, then, I don't know if you guys seen the armrest ever. This is an armrest. I made this myself. I just bought uh, some uh, wrought iron from Home Depot. Uh, heat it up, bend it, and call it good. Smash it a little bit and call it good. Put it on a handle, and now this will serve me for thread chasing. This goes on my armpit, under my armpit, just enough. So I can hold this with my uh, with my finger and hold my tool. In this case, the female. And you will see it in action. It's a very very traditional, very old tool. Very old. Uh, it's been used in wood turning for a long time. If you go find the hosp, uh, maybe I'm say I'm gonna say this word wrong. <laughs> Hosp, hops, hospes, hop. Let's see. Maybe Cindy could help me. Hopspeth, hop, hopsaddle. Hop there you go. Hopsaddle. Oh, if, if you have heard about the hopsaddle books and the turning that he did, uh, he, this tool is a, one of the main tools that he used. So it's been around for years. Mm -hmm. uh, then the other tool I will be using is the inside tool. This is just to make the rebate inside of the box. Uh, nothing special. It, it, it will just cut the inside. The, it will make a rebate in the inside so I can escape. And I will show you that later. Uh, I have another tool that I found on, uh, on Bill Jones' book. It's called the inside, the inside tool. He usually, he, he liked to make his own tools and he grabbed a lot of uh, uh, old files. This used to, this should have been a, a triangle file. It should have been a triangle file. So what he did is, uh, he put a close to 45 degrees angle here, a little tip in there, a flat tip in there, and that's pretty much the one that is going to clean up my box and make the, the sides 
par parallel to each other. And, and you will see how I'll use this. And I love it. Uh, I, I said that they uh, starting this class that I use a lot of scrapers. Uh, I'll be using a lot of this. Mm -hmm. I, I love scraping. Well, he said, he, he said it's not scraping. If the tool if the tool cuts, it's a cutter. So, and you will see that this tool will cut. It won't, it won't scrape. And then of course the medan, the medan tool, it's always used. Um, I also use the point tool. And you can find this point tool at Cindy Rosa. He, he has this signature tool. Uh, it's perfect for this. It's just the right size. It will just do the right for, for the boxes. Uh, then I use a couple of uh, other tools, just a fingernail, um, fingernail, uh, I forget the word, spindle gouge. There you go. You guys gotta help me in that. Sometimes I forget words. And I have, I also use a Reiki, Reiki's uh, special. Uh, spindle gouge. It's weird. It's super weird. Uh, but I like it. it. It eats wood a lot too. Okay, so let's get on. So first of all, what I did is uh, previously I just cylindered this, this uh, blank, made a couple of tenons, parted on, and uh, I parted the uh, what is going to be the lid. And that's what we're going to start doing. It doesn't matter if you start with the bottom or the lid. It's most preferred with the, with the lid because you will decide the size of the opening and then it's easier for you to finish doing the male thread. So it's recommended, but not, not a rule. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up the face and then I'm going to start following this thing out. And oh yeah, I need to have it off and then move it. Yes, 
You get shavings with this one. It's amazing. I love this place. This is called the Inside Tool. If you go to the Bill Jones uh, book, it shows exactly how it's made and what angle it has. It's close to close to 45. It doesn't have to be 45, but uh, but uh, he's got great pictures for it too.
Yep. Better. Now, this is where I start sanding because this is the only opportunity I have to finish this, uh, the inside. The good thing about using scrapers is that it, it, it leaves you a bit ready to go finish sometimes. Um, By the way, uh, 180. There's there's no point for me to start lower than that with this uh, when I when I do this uh, hardwoods. Like I said, you know the, the scrapers do a great job uh, cleaning up all those marks. And uh, I've been using a sanding wax. My mentor, I have a mentor. Um, his name is Mauricio. He's from Uruguay. He, he is the one that got me into Bill Jones and uh, traditional turning. He's crazy. He's a crazy guy. I love him. He's, he, he's a great, he's not just a great, uh, great turner, but a great person. And he hates it when I use the sanding, the sanding wax. He hates it. Because he's so traditional, he said, oh, no, you shouldn't be using that. Your cuts need to be good, as good as, a, a, you know, just passing 220 and done. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, and I think I forgot. That's what I forgot. The paper towel, that's what I forgot. And, um, but he's funny, he's a great guy, he's got a great spirit, he always pushes me. I was talking to him when I was coming here and I said, I don't know, man, I don't think I'm that good. I don't even know why they called me. <laughs> <laughs> and then he said, no, you're good, you're ready, you've been doing it for a while now. Uh, and, uh, and I know you're going to mess up, he said. So you should be fine. <laughs> you mentioned that often about Bill Jones and Richard Ruffin, and you know, every one of the students said that. Uh, and the batting, uh -huh. yeah. Bit, uh huh. Yeah, yeah, he was an, he's another one. And there's a, there's a video uh, worth seeing from him yeah. on YouTube. Uh, I think the Wood Turner's catalog has that video. It's, it's worth seeing it, totally, totally. He, he's a master, he, he, he was a master on it. Uh, they used to joke together, I hear, maybe Cindy knows more about this, but they both used to joke about each other uh, when they get together. And uh, I would love to be there on those conversations, just to listen. They were both very close friends. Yeah, yeah, sure they were. I think Alan's turned a lot of ivory in this room. Yeah, too. probably. Yeah, those, those are great characters. Be, great people to be influenced and uh, learn from, you know. Uh, I, I love, like I said, I love the traditional turning. I love the, the influence that those guys have, uh, the techniques that they have. Uh, what brand of uh, 
Yeah, this is, uh, let's see, this is the Turner's Wood Turner Sanding Wax. This is the competition of the regular, uh, what's this guy, this other guy that came out with this? Uh, this, this is the... Yeah, ham regime, all that stuff. This is the competition. I always like to go the other direction. <laughs> <laughs> so, and it does well. I mean, it's, it's a mix of wax. Uh, I think it's a... What is this in here? Mineral oil, Danish oil, wax, carnauba, microcrystalline wax, and lemon oil. Oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. I'm talking about the finishing. The, the sand in it, mineral oil, beeswax, pumice, Danish oil, and lemon oil. So, yeah, no science. I guess anyone could do it, right? What was I doing? No, I, gotta, I, I can't move this. I gotta still do this because I'm gonna do the female ones. So that's still a little too thick for my taste. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go and uh, eat a little bit more to where the threads are gonna be. So uh, I'm gonna use. For me. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you're using that as a lever? <coughs> yes, uh-huh. Okay. Yes. And you will, you will see when I do the start doing the threads too. And I also use this for this because I can push it in. I can push it in with my body. when I'm doing the threads. Now the box, I, the box is ready for me to do the male threads. And like I said, I'm going to be doing it with a 16 TPI chaser. And I'll be using the armrest for this too. For this, your leg has to be able to go Below, I mean, you can still do uh, threads with 500, but you gotta be super fast. You gotta be super fast. It's all about the, it's all, it's all about the rhythm. It's like dancing, right? You guys dance? <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't see what you did there. <laughs> Dances with wood. That's right. Dancing with wood. So you, you so the slower you go, the better. The slower you go, the better. Now, the the, the typical it's between 200 to, to 350. To between 200 to 350. Uh, I'm gonna start. Uh, so you're making male threads now or female? This will be the female. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm going to go to 2.30. 2.30. Uh, so you see the, the, the pace is lower, so I'll be able to, to manage going in with no issues. Now, I forgot something. I forgot to do a cham chamfer right here, so I can start entering the, uh, the, the, the lid. So I got to go back. And I grab my point tool. <coughs> I love those rhythms. And then I go down, I go back down. So I grab this, uh, now, the tool rest has to be parallel, has to be out of my way because I'm going to have the, the chaser on this side, can't be hitting it. Now I have to be below center. And if you see, I have the chaser angled down, angled down. Uh, it doesn't have to be prone, very pronounced maybe uh, 20, 30 degrees, that's enough, okay? But it has to be pronounced, and you have to be below center, like I am right now. Okay? Now remember, you have to be very delicate with the threads, entering the threads. Uh, you don't have to push it. This uh, chaser was just uh, sharpened, from, I bought a sharpen, so I don't have to, it should just go through. Grabs on the first teeth, grabs on the first teeth, and it should follow the next ones. The first teeth is the most important one. So it can be damaged, it can be uh, unsharpened. The first teeth does all the trick. So I will enter this, first of all, on an angle. So on the chamfer that I just made, Back, do you feel that with the, the chaser? The no, I, I yes, I, I feel like there's an end. Like there, I don't. There's I don't have more wood, That's when so you I get out. Yeah, uh -huh. you gotta get yes. out because you get so, strip all out. That is right. Uh -huh. Yeah. So I stop and I start marking it. Uh, there's a double thread right there. Okay, let's uh, let's keep doing this and see if it goes out. And you will see what I do once I. Uh, Once I have a defined thread. If I do pushing, I'll be messing it up. So the thread has to follow. The first thread is the one that uh, that is in control. So your your body's really doing a lot of the work there. You pull them back into it to cut the threads. Or you... No, the thread is doing the thread chaser. Okay. We don't want to do a lot on this one. 
because this is the main one. This is the one that uh, will determine determine the other uh, the the male. I don't quite like it, thread. No. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean it up a little bit. And this is where I keep messing up. Okay, so I got that. And this is where I don't have much wood. The rebate, this pink rebate. And then go back to that there was uh, what I was doing, I was jumping from the first, uh, the, the front to the back. So that's not good, because that means there's a, you, I've been threading for too much on the middle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, we're gonna start again. So could you seal the threads with something and we can? Uh, seal it with something, like for... Yeah, so, uh, right. so it wouldn't be so fuzzy? Uh, you could. I just don't like to do it. But uh, you could, yeah. Uh -huh. Some people use it, uh, what's it called? Uh, CA glue for it right. on the software. But this is a hard one. If, if it's crumbling on me, it's because I'm messing up. Oh. Yeah, no. It should, shouldn't crumble. Okay, this is where it needs to go well. Huh? Yep, yep, that's what I'll do. That's good. And this is pretty flat. This is not like a little box that you could go curve or inside, you know, it has to be flat.
That's a decent trade. One more pass. This is where I screw up. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> you put wax on it? Yeah, I put the, just a paraffin candle, just so it gives me a little more, more lubrication at the, when I move through the threads.
Okay, guys. Here we go. This kid ratchets and it's not helping. There's a thread, uh, I guess. It's quite a bit of crumble there. Yeah, you can tell. Uh, I'm going to show you something. This is what, uh, what you don't want on the wood that you're threading. There's a white part can you right here. Put it on the yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right there. There's a white part. This is a softer, softer part of the of the wood, and this is what where it gets stuck and jumps because it's too soft. So you have hardwood, softwood, and hardwood again. So the thread it jumps in here and it starts crumbling. It changes the whole uh, this part right here too, and this is not good. So what we're going to do is we're going to try with this boxwood real quick. And... Uh, Can you pass it around? Yes. Can we actually look at those books too? Yes. Uh -huh. We're going to do this with the boxwood. I'm, this is a kind of boxwood. It's not the English boxwood, but it's a type of boxwood. Don't know which type. And that's about right. Now, we're going to clean up the bottom a little bit.
I'm going to finish the bottom or sand or anything on this one because of time. That's about right. Keep it, I mean, 
double thread on that one. Okay. This is the last of them, guys. What's causing the double thread? Huh? What, what is causing the double thread? Uh, the change of pace. Not going or not entering right okay. at the time. That's bad, you know. <laughs> not in this case. <laughs> Uh, yeah, because the, 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 the wood is threading real nice. I mean, I mean the, the, the shape is going nicely. You can hear the noise. Uh, it's not, it's not the, it's not the wood. It's a chaser. Yeah, I already did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know this, if this... Okay, let's go. Chasing, just not on the front is the one that I have to threads on the back. What I'm going to do is some threads now. Uh, now we're going to do the male part. And we'll 
see if they are any good. Yeah. Like I said, I didn't finish the bottom or anything just because of time. But uh, this is where we put the the male, and this is where you calculate, right? Uh, we'll do the calculation. We don't have to measure. We, I, I usually don't measure. I just go by eye, and I'll show you how I do it. Um, I grab the down tool.
Now those those threads are going deep now. I see those threads from here. Uh-huh. Now those threads are going deep. So what I need to do is uh, I need to take this and reuse them. And also clean up this top because it's gonna hit this part when I close it.
8.30. So how much more time? 15 minutes. 15 minutes? Okay, I'll make it in 15. That's, uh, that's, that's crying good. So I'm just going to eat the first one.